Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and welcome to part 26 of our series on making a custom character controller in Unity. In this video, we're going to be building out our controller switching system a little bit more so that we can actually switch on and off the proper cameras when we switch our controllers. And this is going to help us in a couple of ways. First of all, it's going to make sure that when we're using a particular controller, we have the right look and feel for our game. And secondly, it's going to prevent us from having any cameras or audio listeners on at the same time, which can result in some situations that we don't want. So we're going to need to open up a few of our different scripts here um, in MonoDevelop. The first one we're going to open is our controller switcher. Then we're also going to go into our model scripts and we're going to open the walking controller script, the controller script, the vehicle controller, and lastly, we are also going to need in our input scripts folder, we're going to need the input manager. Most of what we're going to be doing today is going to be in the actual controller script, but these other there's a few quick changes we're going to need to make in these other scripts as well. So let's jump over to the controller script. And remember that this controller script is sort of a base class that both the walking controller and the vehicle controller inherit from. So any changes we make here are going to ultimately change those two scripts. So the first thing we want to do is have a place that we can actually access our camera object. Both of our controllers, our walking controller or our player as we're calling them, and our vehicle have a camera that follows them in some way. So we want access to, to that in both cases. So I'm going to add to our set of variables here a protected camera. I'm just going to call this cam. Now in our awake function down here, I'm going to get access to that by saying cam equals get component in children. Because remember also the camera is not on the same object as the client as the controller itself. It's on one of the childed. It's it's an object that is childed or parented to the controller. So we can say get component in children camera. We'll save that. We also want to add two um, public methods here. I'm going to add a public void called activate and a public void deactivate. And we're not going to put anything in these right now, but these are going to be responsible for what actually activates the controller, sets the cameras, sets the audio listeners, all that sort of information. Now, now that we've done this, when we are actually activating and deactivating, what we're going to be doing is going into our input manager and saying, I am now the active controller, and then setting any, like I say, any cameras and any listeners that we need to do. Now, in our controller switcher, how we did this was we just did it directly. We dropped our input manager into the controller switcher and are controlling kind of hard coding it that way or just literally setting it as a line of code. We want to get away from this a little bit because ultimately we're going to be have doing this through things like interactions and hitting keystrokes while we're in a controller. So we want the controllers to be able to speak to the input manager. And the easiest way we can do that is to create a singleton that gives us a reference to this input manager from anywhere. So I'm going to create up at the top here, I'm going to add a simple singleton pattern. And this is not the optimal singleton pattern, but it's going to work right now because we're not going to be changing scenes. Or this input manager isn't going to persist between scenes. So this will work fine for right now. If you do want to put this into a larger game, I highly recommend researching the singleton pattern and seeing how to make it so that it'll bug check and it won't destroy objects that you don't want destroyed and things like that. So all we're going to do here is we're simply going to say public static input manager ins and then we're going to add a void awake function in here that's simply going to set ins at the start of the scene to be this particular input manager. So now we can simply call input manager.ins and get access to the input manager whenever we need it. With that, the other thing we need to do is go to our controller switcher, and here we can now get rid of this public input manager that we had you know, physically dropped the input manager onto. We can now use this access. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete that, and we're gonna change this down here. Instead of checking if the controller is equal through that variable we had, we can simply say input manager 
walk.ins.controller equals walker. And that's doing the same exact thing. We just don't have this extra hard coded or hard drag and dropped bit in there. Likewise, down here now, we no longer need to set the controller directly to vehicle or walker. We know that our activate function is going to do that. So we can simply tell our walker and our vehicle, depending on which case is true, to activate itself. Now, the other thing we have to be careful of now, which is kind of tricky, is that the camera in our controller that we're trying to um, define in our awake function, where we've got this camera that we're gonna you know, have access to, and then we're gonna define it right here. The problem is, if we go back to our scene here and we look at our vehicle character, we see that we turned off this, we actually deactivated the game object of the camera. And we did that so that there wouldn't be two cameras and two audio listeners running, and that's a smart thing to do. But unfortunately, get component in children does not work if a game object is deactivated. It simply skips over that one and doesn't even look for the component. So we're, this isn't going to work this way. What we need to do is we need to reactivate this in the um, inspector here so that it can actually find that and assign that variable. The problem now is that we don't have, when we start our scene, if we were to start our scene right now, we would have two um, cameras running and two audio listeners running and Unity would actually yell at us about having two audio listeners. It's kind of a no-no. So what we need to do is tell our controller if you are not the current running, you know, if you are not the controller that the input manager is looking for right now, you need to turn yourself off at the start of the scene. And so how we're gonna do that is we need to create a start method in our controller script. There's a little bit of a problem with this though, because we have a start method in both our walking controller and our vehicle controller scripts. So now these are kind of in conflict. When we get to the start phase of the, um, of the program in Unity, like when it starts running and gets to the start method, it's not gonna know which one it should go for. Should it go for the parent start? Should it go for the child start? Should it do something in between? So in order to have this work properly, what we're going to do is we're going to make this a virtual method, which means that it can run on its own. Like if, if, if we had another controller that didn't have a start method, it would just look to the controller and say, okay, this is the one we're going to run. However, if there's an override on one of the children, it'll default to that. So what we're going to say here is we're going to say protected, oops, protected virtual void start. So protected just means that only the children can access it. And then virtual means that it can be overridden but will still run on its own. There's also abstract, which means that you're always going to override it and otherwise it's as if that method doesn't exist. So protected virtual void start. And in here, we are going to basically, kind of in the way that you might say in a singleton, in a more robust singleton pattern, you go, oh, if I am not the singleton, destroy myself. Similarly here, it's going to say, oh, if I'm not the main controller right now, I'm going to deactivate myself. So we'll simply say if input manager, oops, manager dot ins dot controller does not equal this particular controller, then simply deactivate. Now, the other reason Obviously, this is kind of complex, and we would it would be not much easier if we could just drop this into the awake function. But the problem that we have with that is that the, this singleton is being declared in the awake method, so we can't guarantee that that's going to happen before this awake method gets called. And if this one gets called first, we're going to have no reference to the input manager.ins. So we need to kind of bump it down a step and say do it in the start method, which we do know for sure will come after the awake method. Now, the other thing we need to do is go into our walking controller and our vehicle controller and make sure that this section gets called during their start functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this from void start to protected override start. And then we're going to say base dot start. So what this will do 
is say, when the start function begins, we're first going to go to our base class, which is the controller class, call the start from here, and then continue with our normal stuff. We're going to do the exact same thing in our vehicle controller. I'm actually going to copy and paste this section here. Paste all that, and then we'll say base dot start. Oops. There we go. So that just makes sure now that no matter what controller we're dealing with, if it's not the currently active controller, it'll deactivate itself and we won't have any extra cameras or anything running. Lastly, we just need to actually fill out those deactivate and activate methods. The activate method is going to do three things. It's going to tell the current controller to deactivate itself. It's going to set itself to be the new active controller, and it's going to make sure that its camera is turned on. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to say input manager.ins.controller. So this right now is calling, is calling up whatever is the current active controller. So we can simply call that up and tell it to deactivate itself. Then we're going to pull up the controller variable again, and we're going to set it equal to the what is becoming now the active controller. And then finally, we're going to look at this cam object. And if we go back to the cam object now, like this chase camera or the camera that we added to our player, we see that it has both the camera and the audio listener attached to it. So we can simply deactivate this entire game object and we'll do exactly what we need to right now. We could go in and get a little bit more granular, deactivate or disable the camera, find the audio listener and disable that. For right now though, we don't need to do both of those things. We can just do it all at once. So I'm going to simply jump back over to MonoDevelop and do that. I'm going to say cam.gameobject.setActive. And in our activate, we're going to make that true. We're going to make sure that if that game object's turned off, we want to make sure it's on. Deactivate is going to be a very simple script. Since we're handling the changing of the active controller up here, all this needs to do is turn off its camera. So camera object. So all I need to do is copy this paste it in here and simply set active to false. And that is now going to turn off the camera and the audio listener on whatever controller is being deactivated. This is also the same thing that's going to happen at the start function where we're saying, oh, I'm not the active controller. Let me turn off my camera because I don't need it right now. So we can jump back over to Unity. And now when we hit play, we're going to notice it's pretty much working the same way right now. We can look around. We'll notice, actually, I'm going to stop this for a second. You'll notice that I have the active chase camera here. When I turn on the program, it turns itself off. That object is now deactivated. However, if I walk around a little bit, you see I'm controlling the character as expected. Now when I hit the V key, this camera is now turned off, but we also see that this camera is turned on. And I am now controlling my vehicle instead of the player. And I'm looking at it from the vehicle's view. If I hit V again, we see we switch back to the player view. Camera keep, or the vehicle keeps moving actually, like that, that late physics update continues to run, which is nice. It doesn't like drag our um, vehicle to a halt just because we've switched over. That simulation continues, but we're now back to controlling our player character. So in our next video now, we can actually start building out the interaction switching rather than using this, you know, kind of um, extra switcher that we've created so that our player can walk up to the vehicle and, you know, kind of get into it, say. And that's actually going to be another thing that we're going to do. Now that we have these activate and deactivate methods, we can add other stuff to them. Like we can say, for example, once our player walks up to the vehicle, they should probably get into that vehicle. And so we can add in things like that that will give us a little bit more, um, just a little bit more effect and have, a, have, a, have an even better feel as we're switching from controller to controller. So we'll dive, all of that in, dive into all of that in the next video. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.